This is the Louis T Network. Who else could it be? But me, your man, Louis T. With a big question. Are the Oakland Raiders done in 2016? Well, maybe. We're about to hit 2017. So Raiders fans may say, hey, yeah, maybe we're all done for 2016. But the playoffs don't start till 2017. So we'll see how the Raiders fare with their field general, Derek Carr, going down with a broken fibula, probably going to miss the rest of the season. Not probably, he is going to miss the rest of the season. There have been reports and rumors that if they make it to the Super Bowl, he may be able to get back. Nah. He's done for the season. So let's talk about the reasons why the Raiders can still have a shot in the AFC. But first, before we get there, we're going to talk about all of the things that have transpired this season, where we are now, and why this is such a polarizing topic of discussion. The league is better when the Raiders are good, and it's been quite some time since the Raiders have been a relevant football team in the NFL landscape, 2002 to be exact. But in that time frame, the Raiders have become one of the lovable losers in this league. But you could see the wheels starting to turn in the right direction with the hiring of Reggie McKenzie. And for a while there, it seemed like maybe he was a guy that wasn't going to be able to get it done. We were questioning whether he was going to keep his job or not. And I never really understood how close he might have been or not have been to getting fired. There was a big dinner that he had um, uh, reportedly with John Davis that a lot of people were saying that's how he kept this job. He may not have even been on the hot seat for all we know. Bottom line is, with his GM prowess, the amount of money the Raiders had available, and some shrewd drafts, this Raiders team started to turn around and it all started in that big 2015 draft for the Raiders, or 2014, excuse me, for the Raiders, in which they went out and pretty much got the foundation for what has become this dominant 12-3 and three team this season in Khalil Mack in the first round on the defensive side of the football and Derek Carr, their field general on the offensive side of the football as their starting quarterback. And they've found pieces as they fill in the blanks of this roster throughout the draft, whether it be Gabe Jackson in the third round or they go into free agency and get some guys or they continue to build through the draft, whether it's Carl Joseph or Jahad Ward or Mario Edwards Jr. They filled in blanks nicely on this roster to the point now where they go into free agency, and I've talked about the amount of money that they had available, and they go out and they spend wisely on guys. They almost made a catastrophic mistake. Had they spent the amount of money that they were going to spend on Mark Bear, on uh, the offensive lineman from the Rams, and he failed his physical, and his name escapes me at this moment, but had they spent the money on him that they ultimately ended up spending on Rodney Hudson and Kelechi Osimile, they would have made a big mistake, and that would have turned into a disaster for the Raiders. But luckily enough for them, the football gods were smiling down on them, and they deserve to have a smile down on them because of all of the dark clouds that have covered this Raiders franchise for the last decade plus. They avoided a disaster there, and they've made some shrewd moves in free agency, bringing in Bruce Irvin from Seattle, bringing in Kelechi Osemele from the Ravens, bringing in Rodney Hudson, and even a serviceable offensive lineman like Austin Howard, who you really didn't want to start if you didn't have to. You were hoping that Menelik Watson would come through for you. But in a pinch, you've had some quality starts out of Austin Howard as well. So all of a sudden now you've built this wall in front of your quarterback and your running backs in Oakland, and you have a shot, and you go 12-3 and three, uh, to this point, still one more game left in the regular season, and you got a chance to win the division, and Jack Del Rio comes on board, and 
everything is starting to come together at the right time. This AFC conference still open to me in my mind, even though the Patriots have been playing much better of late and seem to be the clear-cut favorite in the AFC. I still like the Steelers, but this Raiders team is going to be right there. The only thing that scared me was lack of experience come postseason time. But nonetheless, they were going to have a shot. Styles make fights, and it was all about matchups. And if they could have gotten the right matchups in the postseason, they could have been a dangerous team and a serious tough out in the AFC with Derek Carr at quarterback. Now, with his injury, the question is, do the Raiders even win a playoff game? Now, all the things you see on the left of the screen over here, or over here, or up here, and down here, are things that people think that the Raiders have lost due to the injury. Obviously, Derek Carr down at the bottom, that's the images of his injury and what took place on um, last week on Saturday versus the Indianapolis Colts as he went down on a sack by Trent Cole and broke his fibula and now is going to require surgery and miss the remainder of this season. And then up top is something that Raiders fans have been so ecstatic about, and that's being in the playoffs for the first time in 13 years. They're playoff bound. But how long is that stay going to last due to the injury down below? All the things you see on the opposite side or that side or that side of the screen are all things that I feel like give them a chance to advance in the playoffs. Let's go through them quickly and talk about why the Raiders may have a shot this season, still without Derek Carr in the playoffs. Now, you start with Khalil Mack and the defense. The defense has been a source of frustration for Raiders fans all season long, and rightfully so. They haven't been uh, one of the better units in the league, and at times they've been the reason why this Raiders team hasn't been able to win uh, the few games that they haven't won this season. But of late, they've gotten better. You could argue that some of the competition hasn't been that great, but it doesn't matter. Still got to go out and perform. And the guy that's going to spearhead any attack defensively is the man you see down at the bottom of the screen in Khalil Mack. If he can get it going, he's going to set the table for whatever success they have on the defensive side of the football. Bruce Irvin, opposite of him, has seven sacks on the season. Khalil Mack has 11 between them. The 18 is a good number for a pass rushing tandem. If they can get after the quarterback, make life miserable, they're going to have to stop the run better than they have this season. And maybe the addition of Mario Edwards Jr., who just came back recently, maybe that helps shore up things inside and helps them stop the run a little bit better, put teams in long third down distances and situations and allows Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin to go pin their ears back and get after the quarterback and go hunting. If that is in fact the case and those guys can hit home, the Raiders will have a chance on the defensive side of the football. And without Derek Carr in the lineup, it is imperative that they keep the score totals down because this offense will not be as explosive. They won't score 30 in the blink of an eye like they were before. They're going to need to keep teams down in the low 20s or maybe even the high teens, if possible, like against San Diego, they can keep the score down with a game manager like Matt McGloin, you may be able to get through to the next round. And it's all about winning the next game. And so for the Raiders, defense is going to be paramount if they're going to have a shot. If they're giving up 33, if they're giving up 29, it's going to be tough for them to win with Matt McGloin at quarterback. You go to the next reason why they have a legitimate shot. And I think this is the key offensively. If Khalil Mack is the key defensively, the key offensively isn't Matt McGloin himself. It's those guys in front of him, as you see down below Matt McGloin, the offensive line. They've been one of the best units in the league this season. Top three for sure, you know, with the Cowboys, Redskins, Raiders. I think those are the three best offensive lines collectively this season. And if they're going to have any success in the postseason, it's going to be because those guys up front on the offensive line 
are creating space in the run game and more importantly, giving Matt McGloin the time he needs to survey the field and throw the football to the right targets. If they can continue to have the season that they've had, protect Matt McGloin, and I think it's even more vital now than it has been throughout the regular season to open up lanes in the run game, and they've been a lot better in the run game. I've been so impressed with the Raiders' rushing attack of over the last month of the season. They ran it really well versus the Indianapolis Colts. DeAndre Washington had a hell of a game. They're running the football very effectively. Uh, Jalen Richard also had a strong performance against the Colts. They've been running the football. This offensive line has for the Oakland Raiders. They've been running the football very effectively, run blocking and opening up, gashing holes for their backs. Now the question is, with Derek Carr out of the lineup, do defenses respect the passing game enough to give them these soft boxes that you had to respect. You had to keep two safeties deep. And if you brought one to the to the um, box and you had a, a eight-man front, but it was single high safety, Derek Carr was picking that apart, whether it was Amari Cooper or it was Michael Crabtree getting loose one-on-one. -on -one. He's not afraid to take shots. Defenses knew that, and so they were a little bit hesitant to bring that extra defender in the box and then when you spread teams out like the Raiders like to do, put four wides in a tight or three wides in, in a tight on the field and, and, and then go empty sets, whether you flank out a back or you go four wides in a tight and you just go empty set and let Derek work, you had to respect what they were doing in the past game to the point where you couldn't be comfortable coming up and committing too many defenders to the run, which allowed the Raiders to dominate up front. Now the question becomes, do you get that same respect with Matt McGloin? The answer is probably hell no. Not no, but hell no. Now teams are going to dare you to beat them through the air, and you've got the targets to do so. You've got the guys that can win one-on-one -on -one matchups. The question is, are you going to have enough space to operate? Are they going to come after? We saw when Derek Carr went down versus Carolina what the game plan changed from. It went from, hey, we need to be cautious with Derek Carr. We don't want to come after him because he can sense blitz, pick it up. The offensive line will give him enough time. He'll find Amari Cooper one-on-one. -on -one. He'll find Crabtree one-on-one. -on -one. He'll find Seth Roberts one-on-one. -on -one. They'll win, and then they'll give up. we'll give up a big play. That mindset switched the minute Derek Carr left to, hey, let's blitz the draws off of Matt McGloin. Let's speed his process up. Let's heat him up and see how he does under duress. And he did not fare well in his brief period in that football game. So I think the mindset of defenses now switched to, hey, let's stop the run. Let's suffocate the Raiders' run game and make Matt McGloin beat us. And if he can do that, you tip your cap to the Raiders. But if he can't, we got the Raiders right where we want them. And so I think the offensive line, those big nasties in front of Matt McGloin, are going to be huge in the Raiders' success offensively. And I think really where the game will be won is the Raiders' ability to run the football consistently and stay balanced. If they can't do that, they find themselves down in a football game, have to abandon the run, or they are not having success on first down or second down running the football, and they find themselves continuously in third and long situations, that could spell trouble for this Raiders team come the postseason. And finally, the last reason why the Raiders have a shot is Matt McGloin himself. Here's a guy that has started six games in his NFL career. He's He's been around the block a couple of times, 12 career games he's appeared in. And so it's not like this guy hasn't played throughout the his NFL career. He's had experience. He's been in. I remember watching him uh, a few Thanksgivings ago versus the Dallas Cowboys, and they jumped on the Cowboys um, early in that football game. They were up like 21-7 to at halftime. McGloin was playing great. And the second half was a tale of two halves, essentially. First half, McGloin was flawless. He was taking his team up and down the field. They were making plays. They were up big. Second half, McGloin made mistake after mistake after mistake. They blow the lead, and they end up getting blown out in that football game, and it wasn't even close. You would have probably even forgotten they were up 21-7 to at one point in that game because of how lopsided the victory ended up being for the Cowboys, but it was because Matt McGloin didn't take care of the football in the second half of that game. And that's the thing you have to guard against with McGloin is that he has experience, he can make throws, he can make some plays for this Raiders offense, but he can also make critical mistakes. We've seen that in the past. He's a backup for a reason. And so 
what you have to do if you're the Raiders is limit the amount of times you ask him to have to be a playmaker for you, which, which with Derek Carr, Derek Carr was a playmaker every time he set foot on the field for you. You always felt like you had a shot with Derek Carr. Up 14, down 14, the, the mindset never changed. We can still win this game. With Matt McGloin, you get down early 14 in the game, I don't know if the whole team still has that same mindset that we're coming back because Matt McGloin is back in the backfield at quarterback. So I think it is imperative to get off the quick starts, and we know the Raiders have struggled with that um, this season uh, with fast starts. They've been a, a notorious slow-starting football team that revs it up in the second half of games. I don't know if that's a recipe for success or not with McGloin at quarterback, but he's no slouch. He can play. He can spin it. He can do some things for this Raiders football team. The question is, can you stay balanced? Keep him in a comfortable state. If you make this guy have to win games with his right arm, you could be in some trouble if you're the Raiders. I think what you want to do, the game plan going in, should be stay balanced. Let's run it more than we pass it. And when need be, we'll ask Matt McGloin to come in and make some, uh, some big throws for us and some plays, and we'll go off of that. Hopefully the defense steps up, does their part. Be nice to create some turnovers and some short fields for McGloin and company. But all that being said, Matt McGloin is going to come out and compete. He's not afraid of this moment. I think he's going to come out and give them a shot. The question is, do the Raiders, and they need to do this collectively as a team. It'd be nice to get a contribution from special teams. It'd be nice if the defense stepped up, forced a couple of turnovers. This has to be a collective effort. Before the injury to Derek Carr, we said, look, the Raiders offensively are as good as anybody in the league. They can win off the strength of their offense and getting a little help from the defense. Now that mindset has to switch to, hey, this is a collective effort. We all need to pitch in special teams, defense, and the offense all has to do their job. Amari Cooper, Michael Crabtree, those guys have been special for the Raiders throughout this run, but they're not on this list because if the offensive line doesn't do their job, if Matt McGloin doesn't do his job, they're not even going to get the football. So all of that stuff becomes irrelevant. The running backs, all of those things become irrelevant if the offensive line isn't giving him time or they can't uh, open up lanes in the run game and they become one-dimensional and teams get to tee off. All of a sudden now, Matt McGloin doesn't get an opportunity to get the football to his playmaker. So to me, these are the reasons why the Raiders have a shot. Defensively, Khalil Mack has to lead the way. If he can do that, they got a shot on the defensive side of the football. Offensively, the offensive line has, has to continue to be dominant. And we'll see what happens. They have to continue the trend that we've seen of late, which is running the football effectively to keep the pressure off of McGloin. And lastly, Matt McGloin. Look, he's been in this league four years now. He's, he's come in, and it's much different when you come in off the bench than actually having a week of preparation, getting all of the reps, and getting into a rhythm and a flow. It's going to take a little bit of time, and that's why I think this final game versus Denver is huge because he needs to get back into the rhythm of things. He needs to get a little bit of timing down with his receivers, something that he hasn't been able to do because he doesn't practice during the regular season. He's not taking a lot of reps. So now these last couple of outings, the, the game versus Indy, when he came in, made a huge throw at the end of the game to wrap it up. That was much needed because it was a one-score game, cri uh, critical and clutch throw. That was big time. That's what McGloin can do. And so this final game versus Denver, this is going to be a big test for him, okay? Broncos are out of things, but they're still a good defense. Can he come in, do, and remember, they ran the football, did the Raiders really well against the Broncos the first time. They need to do that again. They need to reestablish the fact that we can run the football and exert their will against teams. And so that's going to be key. But what McGloin does in this game is going to be worth watching as well because I think this is going to be a great opportunity for him to get some timing down with some of these guys. And remember, the number one seed is still out there for the Raiders. So this is a game that they do want to go out and get in case the Patriots, who have had their struggles week 17 in Miami, in case they have another slip up, Raiders can be there to get the number one seed and have the AFC playoffs come through Alameda in Oakland. So this is a big, big game for the Raiders and a big, big game for Matt McGloin and his progress as the Raiders get ready to go to the postseason. I tell you what, it might not be the worst thing in the world if the Raiders don't win on su uh, Sunday and fall to the five seed. You want to win the division, you want the first round bye, but the, the Houston Texans don't scare anybody. 
And if that's who you have to play in the first round, I think Matt McGloin can take this Raiders football team to Houston and win. So whether you win that game or not on Sunday and whether you win the AFC West, to me, you're still going to get to the second round. Whether you get the first round by or you get uh, the fifth seed and you go to Houston, you can win that football game with Matt McGloin at quarterback. So we'll see what happens with this Raiders football team. One thing's for sure, they're in the playoffs. So you're telling me there's a chance. So if you're a Raiders fan, may not be Super Bowl, but you might be able to get you a W or two, depending on who you end up playing come playoff time. Let's see what happens with the silver and black. I am a, hey, remember, if it happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, we cover it all here on the Louis T Network. Are the Raiders done in 2016? Maybe. But are they done in 2017? We'll find out together come playoff time. I'll see you next time.